Now, let's remind ourselves where we've been. We were talking about pulse speed when last we met. And we found that for transverse pulses, as on a string or a spring or a, a rope, that that speed only depended on the tension and the mass density. In the book, we use this mu symbol, where mu is the mass over the length. Okay? Now, this is, uh, this is what we saw when we had simple harmonic motion. It was, uh, the timing was dependent upon how hard it was to move something, how, how much inertia there was, and how much restoring force there was. Well, in this case, the restoring force is that tension force, and that, uh, that measure of how hard it is to speed it up or slow it down, that's the mass density, how much mass there is in a unit of length. Now, you notice that here, I've used the symbol rho. That's the way I was trained. Uh, when, when the book was originally written, it was rho. Uh, my co-author Ron really wants it to be mu, and so it's mu in the book. You can, you can deal with that, okay? The formula is this one that will be on the front page of the exam, and it's that formula that you are to use to solve all three of those homework problems that were due today. Let's look at this problem that you just turned in. You have a steel wire that is supporting this heavy block. And we pluck the wire in the middle, and we want to know how long it takes the pulse to reach the ceiling. Now I've got a question. If I pluck it in the middle, why does that pulse go up instead of down? It goes both ways. Just like when you throw a rock in the, in the pond, the, the disturbance goes in all directions. In this case, the only direction that can go is up and down. It goes both ways. But we're asked how long does the pulse that goes up, how long does it take to reach the ceiling? Now, if we knew how fast it was going, this would be an easy problem to solve. Well, we could find out how fast it's going by calculating the mass density that's the mass over the length. The mass, we're told, is 0.4 kilograms. The length is 0.64 meters. And that's going to give me 0 0.625 kilograms per meter. Now, the tension we find from a free body diagram. <coughs> if I draw a free body diagram for this block, I have a gravitational force, and that's going to be, if we take the gravitational field strength to be 9.8, call it 10, that's going to be 1,020 newtons. Now, it's just sitting there with no acceleration, so that means that the only other force, the tension force, by the wire on the block has to be 1,020 newtons. Now, Question, is the tension the same all the way through that wire? No. <coughs> mm, sort of. I mean, no, it's going to be bigger here than it is there because of the weight of the wire itself. But you'll notice that the wire has a, a really, really small mass compared to the mass of the block. Small enough to be negligible. And that's typically the way we think of these problems, that the, the mass of the wire itself is important when we're calculating the mass density of the wire, but it's not important when we're, we're finding the tension in the wire. Okay, we assume that the, the mass of the wire is negligible compared to the block, and so we assume that the tension is pretty much the same all the way throughout. If you were to actually calculate um, the tension up here, uh, it would be 1,024 newtons. And I'm here to say 
you know, if I came in here and says, oh, you just inherited $1,020, or you just inherited $1,024, you're the same happy. You're the same happy, okay? Depending on who died. Okay. Now, if I go in and solve for the velocity, that's going to be 1,020 newtons divided by point, uh, 0.625 kilograms per meter, and that's going to give me 40 meters per second. Now, once I know the speed, it's very easy to find uh, the time. If I use the definition of the speed, that's how far it travels. In this case, it's up, so I'll use delta y divided by how much time. If I rewrite that, I have the time is equal to how far it travels <coughs> divided by the speed. That's going to be 0 0.32. It only goes halfway up the wire divided by 40 meters per second, and that's going to be 0 0.008 seconds. See if your neighbor got that answer. If not, <laughs> slap them. <laughs> uh, we also talked about the pulse speed for sound, and what we found was it depended on how hot the air was and whether it was air or whether it was some other kind of gas. Um, we find that in air, it travels at 343 meters per second at room temperature, and as you heat up the room, it goes a little bit faster, 0.6 meters per second for every one degree centigrade Celsius that we raise the temperature. The formula that will never be used, that will not be put on the first page of the exam, because I don't want you to use it by mistake, is this one here. I just wanted you to see it once in your life. Okay. I mean, there's things you got to see. The um, Statue of Liberty, the equation for sound pulses.